you found the ideal credit card. Fill out the application and hit submit, only to be met with that dreaded message, application denied. A week later, a letter arrives listing vague reasons for the rejection. Sounds familiar? Don't worry, you're not alone. In today's video, I'll break down the top reasons for credit card denials and guide you on the steps to take. What's up winners, my name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit, starting out by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. There are three main paths to credit card approval. First, there's an instant green light from a computer algorithm. Second, a computer might take its time, but eventually gives you the nod. And third, the decision rests in human hands. While this isn't the blueprint for every bank or credit union, it's a trend that we often see with many lenders. So dive with me into the reasons behind those dreaded rejections and how to tackle them. If your financial history is littered with red flags like charge-offs, collections, bankruptcies, or late payments, it's no mystery on why big players like Chase, American Express, or Bank of America might be giving you the cold shoulder. The fresher these wounds, the tougher it is to secure cards from these giants. And yes, your credit score paints this picture too, and any blemishes on your credit report drags your score down. While each card issuer has a FICO score sweet spot, pinning down that exact number is like trying to catch smoke. It fluctuates based on factors like your location, application timing, the economy, and more. If this resonates with you, then your game plan should be credit repair. One of the top reasons of why you might be facing credit card denials is the maximum unsecured credit already available clause. This typically pops up when you're trying to get another card from a lender that you're already with. So imagine this, you're eyeing a new card from Bank of America, Chase, or US Bank, but there's a catch. These banks have a cap on how much credit they can offer you and it's tailored to your income and credit score. There's really no way to know your cap unless you get denied. So here's the hack. Ring up the reconsideration hotline and tell them that based on my rejection letter, it seems that I've maxed out on the credit that I qualify for. But what if we shuffle things around? Can we trim the excess credit limit from one of my existing cards and channel it to a new one? Now, just a heads up, this isn't a magic trick. I've personally struck gold with this strategy for like a Barclays card, but I've also hit brick walls as well. Here's another red flag leading to denial. There's too many credit inquiries in a short period of time, like within the last 12 months. So you wanna keep an eye on that. So let's decode this. A surge of inquiries in a short time span screams, I am credit hungry. And guess what? Credit card companies aren't fans of that vibe. Now, why does this matter? Think of it as dating. If you're seen hopping from one date to another too quickly, it may raise some eyebrows. Likewise, rapid fire credit card applications make issuers worry. So the workaround is to dive in the world of the credit bureaus. Most credit card companies have a favorite, like for example, Experian. Sure, they may pull credit from TransUnion or Equifax, but from my experience and data from fellow credit enthusiasts, Experian is usually the go-to. So if your Experian report is peppered with inquiries, then brace for some tough love. Now, if you wanna boost your odds, target cards that lean on TransUnion or Equifax. So here's a pro tip. Some folks can get crafty by freezing their Experian report. So the idea behind this is that to force the card company to check other barrels. So there are some chatter about this working or not, but it's kind of a gamble. Sometimes the issuer may tell you just to thaw that Experian freeze before giving you the green light. Another thing to possibly think about is hard inquiry removal, which brings me to today's sponsor, my software, Credit Rehab Pro. This software can help you with credit repair for a fraction of the cost that you would pay an agency. It allows you to easily dispute as many accounts as you want across all three bureaus. We're talking about hard inquiries, collections, charge-offs, late payments, and much more. In a matter of seconds, you can create dispute letters specific towards your situation and print them out at home. What's more is that if an account wasn't deleted, the software suggests a new strategy for addition to disputes. You see, Credit Rehab Pro is not just another tool. It's like a personal credit coach that guides you through the entire step in the right order. And the best part is, is that you have full control. You can repair your credit at your own pace in your own time. I do have a link down in the description if you want to check it out. Now, let's move on to our next reason, the Credit Catch 22, needing history to make history. Picture this, you're fresh on the credit scene, but banks want to see a year's worth of credit history. It's like the classic job conundrum, entry-level positions wanting years of experience. Annoying, right? So how do you break the cycle and snag that first credit card with zero credit history? Let's explore this. First is the secure card strategy. Think of it as a training wheels for your credit. You put down a security deposit, typically $200 or more, 
and voila, you got a card. Use it wisely and within six to 12 months, you have a pretty decent credit score. The second way is the secure loan route. Many modern fintechs offer credit builder loans. So here's the gist. They loan you say $500, which you pay back over time. Once settled, you get your money back minus the interest. So what's the bonus of all of this is that it adds a sprinkle of diversity to your credit score. Third is the in-branch application. Some cards are more beginner friendly. Take Bank of America cash rewards card. If you apply in-branch, especially if you're already a customer, your approval odds skyrocket. On the flip side, if you are eyeing the Chase Freedom Flex card without any ties to Chase, then your chances are much lower. And fourth is the authorized user hack which is getting added as an authorized user on someone else's card. Some issuers will backdate your credit history when the account was open and not just when you just joined. So that could mean an instant credit history of two, five, or even 10 years. As of this video, some issuers that still do this is Capital One, Discover, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. Now let's move on to our next reason, the installment loan gap. This is when your credit report feels a little empty. Have you ever been told that you lack installment loan information. It's a bit of a curveball, especially when credit card companies usually zoom in onto your revolving credit and not so much on your installment lines. So what's the deal? If you're getting this feedback, then it's a hint that you probably never had a loan. There's no car loans, student loans, mortgages, or even personal loans on your record. So how do you fill this gap? Now, all you gotta do is just dive into the world of installment credit. Now, I'm not advocating diving into debt just for a credit boost, but there are savvy ways to build this credit line. Companies like Credit Strong, Self, Kovo offer secure loans designed to help you craft a robust installment credit profile. Now, another common denial reason is opening up too many credit cards or accounts in a certain amount of time. Opening too many cards in a short time span can be a red flag for issuers. Now, the first key point about this section is the Chase infamous 524 rule. Even though Chase plays coy about it, the 524 rule is no secret. But here's a twist. Recent trends suggest there is a little bit of leniency. Chase appears to be strictly enforcing this rule up until April of 2023. Recent data points indicate that some people are getting approved for Chase cards despite being over 524. Next is the authorized user quirk. Thinking about being added to someone else's account, that counts as a new account for you. If there are personal accounts tied to your name and social security number, the remedy is just time. But for authorized user accounts, the call to the reconsideration hotline might just swing things in your favor. Though a fair warning, it is a hit or miss. Next is the American Express card cap. American Express has a five credit card ceiling, meaning that you can only juggle five of their credit cards at once. This includes personal and business cards. Plus they play by the one in five and the two in 90 rules, limiting on how often you can get new cards. Another one is Bank of America's two, three, four rule. Without diving too deep, just know this. You can open a max of four Bank of America cards in a rolling 24 months. Other banks like Citibank, Barclays have their own set of rules as well. So the moral of the story is to do your own homework before applying. It's all about playing your odds smartly. Now, next is the total credit applications when compared to the total income that you provide. This is the balancing act, credit card applications versus your income. Have you ever been told that your credit applications outweigh your income? This is the debt to income dance. So what's the deal? If your credit card debts and loan payments overshadow your income, issuers, Get a little jittery. Think about it. If you're drowning in debt, why would they toss you an anchor instead of a lifeline? So the fix is to trim down that credit card debt. When it comes to installment lines like auto loans, personal loans, or mortgages, the lower the balance, the brighter your approval chances. Yes, some of these loans are hefty, but the goal is to tackle credit card balances first. Now moving on to our next topic, which is the magic of reconsideration hotlines. Throughout this video, I've nudged you towards the power of a simple call. Wondering where you can get these hotlines? The internet got your back. My top pick is Doctor of Credit. It's basically a gold mine, but before you dial, ensure that you got that denial letter handy. Reconsideration really isn't on the table without it. If you receive a delayed response, then hold off. The system might still be looking over your details, so only ring them up with the reference number or the actual letter in hand. All right, folks, so we journeyed through the maze of credit card denials together. If you still have burning questions, drop them down in the comments. I'm always on the lookout to help as many of you as I can. And hey, if you crack the code with your own denial busting tips, share the wealth. Let's make this community a treasure trove of insights. If you're facing credit card woes, don't fret. Join me at these videos right here. Together we rebuild and boost that score. I'll see you over there.